In our Thursday night Bible study, we've been looking at the flood and, and Noah and all the events that were leading up to the time of the, the flood and what the world was like. We're told that you know, it's going to be like that of the days of Noah when the, the Son of Man will return. And we looked at what it was like, basically. You know, and if you got your Bibles, let's, let's just refresh ourselves. Turn to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And as we're turning there, we're going to be talking about a covenant. And, and God is uh, the one that uh, establishes this covenant. But, you know, when we talk about covenants, we also talk about, you know, we have before us here in, in his word, we have covenants, don't we? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people refer to, oh, it's the Old Testament and the New Testament, but really, you know, we're talking about the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. And, and covenant is something that we as, as Americans really don't truly understand. It's nothing that, you know, has been driven into our culture like it is into other cultures. But let's just, uh, let's, let's look at what it says here. And we're going to look at verses 9 through 13 uh, to start with. And it says, this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people of earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. And so we looked at the flood. The great deluge, and, and, and it's because of what the world had become. You know, and we looked at, you know, it, it, as, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be. You know, you know are we close to the coming of the, of the Lord? And we look at what the earth was like back then. It was full of, you know, it was corrupt. You know, has our world become corrupted? And is it full of violence? We looked at that word violence, it's the word Hamas. Now, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's just a coincidence that there are people out there that are calling themselves, you know, to fight against God's people, Hamas, which means violence. You know, it's just a coincidence, I'm sure. But, you know, so God made a decree that he was going to destroy the earth. And, and he told Noah, who was a righteous man, he was found right in God's eyes. And he was the only one of the time. How many people lived on the earth in the days of Noah? It was almost 2,000 years since creation. You know, what had the population grown to? And all God could find was one righteous person? That's scary. You know, and, and you look at the world around us right now, how many righteous people are there? Well, I think there's more than just one. But the numbers, you know, we were kind of, you know, talking about a little bit. You know, it seems like the number of people that are even worrying about God's word is, is dwindling. You know, we're told that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He'd been preaching for a hundred years and all he got was his family to get onto the, onto the ark. You know, we as pastors, you know, we, we, we should learn from that. I mean, not to, to get discouraged when people don't want to get on the ark. You know, the, you know the, Noah and his family got on the ark and the door remained open seven days. The invitation stood open and nobody took him up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the people of that day were destroyed mm -hmm. by the flood. But let's go ahead and we're going to power through the, the flood. We know what happened. It rained. The, 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 the fountains of the deep burst forth and all of... The, 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 all of living you know, creatures died, except for Noah and those that were in the ark with him. So jump forward to chapter 9 now. We're going to start out at verse 8. And it says, Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with the descendants after you. And with every living creature 
that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, and all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So you and I, we have a covenant that we're living under, even from the Old Testament. A lot of times people look at the Old Testament and they say, well, that, that doesn't apply anymore. Well, aren't we still under this covenant? Doesn't the rainbow still appear in the sky when it rains? Mm -hmm. To remind us of the covenant that God has established with all living creatures? Mm -hmm. And this covenant was made not with just Jews, but it was all living creatures. So there are still parts of the Old Testament that apply to us, right? That's, that's the sad thing is so many people totally ignore the Old Testament or the Old Covenant mm -hmm. because they think it's just singular. It's a covenant. There's many covenants in there. But it's for us to remind us. And, and I think it's interesting how the world around us, you know, we, we talk about cultural appropriations and all these type of things, how they've hijacked the symbol of the rainbow. The rainbow is supposed to be a reminder to us of the covenant that God has established, that never again will he flood the earth with a flood that will destroy all life. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't say here that he was going to stop all floods. Right. Yeah. You know, and there, there'll be people that argue that. They're saying, well, see, God, you know, he lied. No, no. he never said that there would never be another flood. He said that a flood to destroy all life. So we have to understand our covenants, don't we? See, that's one of the problems. You know, a lot of Christians, they don't understand the covenants that we're under. Mm -hmm. Because it's important to understand, you know, a covenant is a formal binding agreement or a compact. Mm -hmm. You know, we, 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 we as Americans, we, we'd say, well, it's a promise. Well, have you ever had anybody break a promise? What was the ramifications of them breaking a promise? Mistrust. Nothing. Mistrust. You don't trust that person ever again. You know not to ever you know, accept a promise from them. Mm -hmm. But a covenant was much more severe. In the Bible, if you broke a covenant, basically you would lose your life. Remember, uh, we won't get into, you know, uh, the, there are so many different covenants that were established with blood which was a symbol that says, if I ever break this covenant, this is what's going to happen to me. It, it, Abraham established a covenant with God because God told him, you know, bring me these animals, and he never said what to do with them. And Abraham cut them in half and basically laid the two halves together or, uh, apart, and, and that was a symbol of a blood covenant that said, basically, if this covenant is ever broken, this is what will happen to us. And God's the one that established that a covenant. And here, God established this covenant too. So let's look at some other covenants that maybe have been established that we need to understand, okay? So if you would, turn with me to Numbers chapter 25. We're going to visit a few more places in the Bible. Numbers chapter 25. In this passage, maybe you're familiar with a, a gentleman by the name of Balaam. And if you're not familiar with Balaam, maybe you'll remember his donkey, the one that talked. Oh, yeah, that guy, right? You remember him, the, the guy that had a donkey that was smarter than him? Because he turned away and, he, you know, the angel was getting ready to kill Balaam because he wouldn't turn aside. You know, well, Balak had hired Balaam to curse the nation of Israel. And Balaam basically says, I can't do it. 
God has told me to bless, and bless I will. But then he says, but I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how to, to corrupt them. He couldn't do it physically himself. He couldn't pronounce a curse upon them. But he says, they'll do it to themselves. So that's where we pick up the story. Numbers chapter 25, verse 1. And it says, while Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to sacrifice to their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods, so Israel joined in worshiping the Baals of Peor, and the Lord's anger burned against them. What was the first commandment God gave the Israelites, you remember? He gave them 10 from, from the mountain. The first one was, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the second one, have no graven images or the idols. So they've basically broken two of God's commandments for them. And these are the commandments that God holds them accountable for, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and they were doing these things. Uh, they were doing the exact things God had told them not to do. And it says that the Lord's anger burned against them. And it says, the Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of these people, kill them, and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. That's a severe judgment, isn't it? The leaders, does it say that the leaders were the ones that were committing this? No, it says basically that the, 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 the men began to indulge. But God holds the leaders accountable, the nation accountable. They should have been the ones stopping it. But they weren't doing it. So God tells Moses basically that we're going, you're going to kill these men so that you can turn away the fierce anger of the Lord. He's demanding the blood be shed for their sin. Verse 5 says, So Moses said to Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshiping the Baals of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelites into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them through the Israelite and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. Mm -hmm. Was this a serious sin for the nation of Israel? Mm -hmm. Very serious. And it caused a plague to break out. And we find out it's the actions of one man. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Phineas, you know, he had a zeal for the Lord. He saw what was going on. The, this Israelite man took, you know, a Midianite woman. You know, they weren't supposed to, to intermingle with the, the, the nations around them. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, this isn't his wife either. So they're committing you know, sexual immorality right there in front of the entire nation. They're, you know, they're there at the tent of meetings talking with God. And basically, here comes this guy trying to sneak in and, 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 and get away with something. Mm -hmm. And Phineas, he sees it. You know, and, and he notice it, he's, he's never told to, to take care of this problem. He has a zeal for, for, for the nation and for God. He grabs the spear and he, he basically goes and, and, and kills this, not basically, he does, he kills this Israelite and this Midianite. And, and notice, and it says, then the plague against the Israelites was stopped. But those who died in the plague were 24,000. The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites for he was as zealous as I am for my honor among them. 
so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. You know, how many times has the nation of Israel been saved by the efforts of one person? Mount Sinai. You know, Moses is up there basically receiving the, the law. And, 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 you know, the Israelites are down there in the camp dancing around the golden calf. And God says, step aside, Moses. I'm going to wipe them out. And my, Moses could have gone, yeah, okay. And he, he intercedes and he stands between the nation of Israel and the Lord and says, Lord, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Well, here we have one person. Phineas, he has a zeal. Let me ask you, what would it take today to turn around the wrath of God? Would it be the same one person? I don't know about what's going, you know, the world we know is kind of as it was in the days of Noah. How, you know, how, how close are we to that right now? But how close are we to what the nation of Israel has experienced with the Moabites? I think we're somewhere in between, don't you? You know, it's, it's beyond just simple sin. You know, now we're almost up into total corruption. But for us, we know that God sees the efforts of just one person. And we may not be able to change the world, but we can change where we're at. We can stand for God. At Phineas, it says here that he had a zeal. And, and, it, and it was his desire to see God honored. That should be our desire too, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to see God honored? I do. Mm -hmm. You know, in what we do. Well, you know, we're little churches. What can we do? The efforts of one person turned away the wrath of God for the entire nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. So in our churches, we can do something. And we can honor God. And, he, and it says, and I did not put an end to them. Therefore, tell him I am making a covenant of peace with him. He is in, his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. God is establishing a covenant with a person. It's really a tribe. The tribe of Levi. Phineas and his descendants. He says, I'm making a covenant. What did it say there? Of peace. Well, you and I, we have a covenant with God too, don't we? Mm -hmm. We're told in Revelation, or excuse me, Romans chapter 5. Verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we too can ha we have peace with God. Now, this is something the nation of Israel hadn't experienced or wasn't experiencing. They were experiencing the wrath of God. But he says, For Phineas, I'm making an everlasting covenant of peace with you. And he says, because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. That one act. I mean, it was one Israelite and one Moabite. But, but, but by them having to, to die for their sins, God says he's made atonement for the sins of Israel. Do you think all of Israel was watching? We know they were. They were there at the tent of meetings, at least their leaders and everything, the leaders that had just gotten told, you know, you, you got to go out and you're going to die because you're allowing this to happen. Now Phineas has, has done this one act, and it's, it's, it's basically set things right with God. And we won't go on to the rest of the story here, but I, I think it's interesting that God knew Phineas by name because of his zeal and his desire to see God honored. Do you think he knows us in the same way? Yes. Of course he does. Mm -hmm. We too, you know, he knows us by name and he sees our efforts and our desires. 
You know, this one man, he wasn't about, you know, well, I want to see the nation to be, you know, multi-billion people, and we're going to have a, a tabernacle, and we're going to have worship service over here, and we're going to have all these sacrifices. It'll be great. No. He saw this one act disrespecting God, and he stood up for God. And God blessed him for it. But now let me ask you, can we get the, on the wrong side of a covenant? Mm -hmm. You know, just because God says, okay, a, a covenant of peace. Now, let's look at the flip side of this, because there are some people that uh, take advantage of this idea, this covenant. Turn with me to Malachi chapter 2. Malachi, last book in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, chapter 2. We know that the priesthood was basically where Phineas was at, right? He was a descendant of Levi, a descendant of Aaron. Uh, you know, so he, he is a part of the priesthood. Now in Malachi, we're going to hear God talking to the priests. Malachi chapter 2, we'll start out at verse 1. And it says, and now this admonition is for you, O priests. If you do not listen, and if you do not set your hearts to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them, because you have not set your heart to honor me. What was in Phineas's heart? Basically to honor God, to, to see him glorified. Mm -hmm. Now in Malachi, he says, you priests, you aren't trying to honor me. You know, the priests, they, they, they were going through the rituals, weren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, the they had temple worship, they had the sacrifices, they were doing all the things that they thought, hey, we're in good shape, look at all the things we're doing. We've got all the gold stores in the refrigerator, right? Mm -hmm. God says, no, listen to me, priests. You haven't set in your hearts to honor me. Verse 3 says, Because of you I will rebuke your descendants. I will spread on your faces the offal from your festival sacrifices, and you will be carried off with it. And you will know that I have sent you this admonition, so that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord Almighty. He's going to continue the covenant. You know, the, 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 the Levitical priesthood, they were zealous for God. And that's, that's why they got the, the, the priesthood. You know, they were zealous. They wanted to see God honored. They defended God. And Phineas was another example of that. We see in their hearts, you know, to honor God. And God says, I want that covenant to continue on. But for you priests, you aren't doing what you're supposed to do. See, the part of a covenant is there's two halves of the covenant, or two parts. You know, the, each side brings something to the table, and it's agreed upon. Well, here, the priests, they're not doing their job. And I'm sure if you would have gone up and asked them, they, they would have said, oh, yeah, we're doing it just like God told us to. You know, today you could probably go into a lot of churches and they'd say, yeah, we're doing it just like God told us to. Mm -hmm. Oh, are we really? What are we trying to do? Are we trying to glorify God or are we trying to glorify man? Too many people are trying to glorify man or the denominations or they're trying to glorify the programs, maybe the band or the, you know, whatever the case may be. What's our desire? I hope it's to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And it says that, uh, um, verse 5, My covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace, and I will give them to him. This calls for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false was found in his lips. He walked with me in peace, and uprightness, and turn many from sins. We got to see the start of the Levitical priesthood, right? They started out good. 
then, then they fell. And by the time Malachi has rolled around, they're not doing what God had intended them to do. They, you know, it's it basically, the, the, you know, he was saying that, you know, it calls for reverence of God. You know, let me ask you, is the fear of God alive and well in the world around us? Do people revere God like God wants us to revere him? No. No. I think there's a lot of churches, they've lost the fear of God. To revere me and to stand in awe of my name? Do we stand in awe of God? That's something we have to remember. He is God Almighty, the supreme creator of this universe. The sovereign, he, you know, it, it's his, it's his world, mm -hmm. and he shares with us a blessing. That's right. You know, he had with Levi a covenant of life and peace, and you know that's the thing. In the New Testament, we have a covenant that we get to enter into, a covenant of life and peace. Mm -hmm. But it's because of what he has done for us. It's what Jesus did mm -hmm. by dying on the cross. It says, true instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness and turned many from sin. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge, and from his mouth men should seek instruction, because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. But you have turned from the way and by your teachings have caused many to stumble. You have violated the covenant with the Levi, says the Lord Almighty. So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people, because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of the law. God's paying attention, isn't he? He knows. He, he, how many people, how many of, of, of God's messengers have turned away from the message? Ha, ha, have caused other people to stumble? Mm -hmm. See, that's something that I think you know, we can see. You don't have to look very far to see that happening. Causing God's people to stumble. You remember, you know, Jesus, you know, he, he's that rock of offense. You know, many people stumble over him, you know, the Jews. But, you know, now his messengers are causing people to stumble. And, it, and, it is, and it's different because, you know, when, when the Jews stumbled, it was because they thought their religion was going to save them, their appearance of the law. No, the law never made anybody righteous. So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in the matters of the law. <laughs> it's funny, we, we know a, a, a gentleman who's Jewish and he even jokes about it. If you want to have a BLT, just slip the, the priest some money. They'll look the other way. It's still happening today. Just bribe the priest. You know, or bribe, you know, whoever. You know, it's not that, you know, it, you know, for them, the law, you know, it's something, it's more of a guideline than a hard, fast rule, right? Mm -hmm. But for us, we know it's not. The law is there to teach us what sin is, <laughs> that we need a Savior. One more passage, and we're done. Turn with me now to Isaiah chapter 55, keeping this idea of covenants. See, God knows the covenant. He understands the terms. He established the covenant with Levi. He established the covenant with Phineas. But then he held the priests accountable for holding up their part of that covenant. Isaiah chapter 55, we'll start out at verse 1. Very familiar passage, I hope, to, to all of you. It says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, 
in your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affairs. Give ear and come to me, hear me, that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, the invitation is open. Are you thirsty? Now, we're not talking physical thirst. We're talking spiritual thirst. Are you hungry? We're talking, again, spiritual hunger. Jesus said, I, my body is the bread and, and my blood is the wine. And, you know, he invites you to come and partake of. Are, are we thirsty for that? See, that was that zeal that Levi had. That was that zeal Phineas had to see God glorified and he trusted God. Or do we have that same kind of zeal that says, I want to be in right standing with God. But God here is offering to make an everlasting covenant with us. The same as my faithful love promised to David. Now, we remember the story of David, right? You know, David, you know, he was a man after God's own heart. But yet he had problems, didn't he? You remember he had a little problem with lust, kind of like the, the Israelite nation, Bathsheba. Yeah. But, you know, during that uh, little uh, period of time in his life, he committed two sins that we know of. One, he, he caused Uriah to be murdered. And also he committed adultery with Bathsheba because she was another man's wife. What was the punishment for those two things? Death. Death. There was no sacrifice for those sins. There, there was nothing in the law that allowed them to bring the sacrifice for the atonement of those sins. But David repented. He sought the Lord's forgiveness. When confronted with his sins, he says, you're right, Lord. I have sinned, and against you and only you have I sinned, is what he says in, in, in Psalms. The faithful love promised David. God forgave David, even though there was no forgiveness in the law, there's forgiveness in God's heart. And that's the covenant that he wants to establish with us. More than just the covenant that he had with Levi, more than the covenant he established with Phineas. A covenant, an everlasting covenant of his faithful love promised to David. It says, see, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the, prof of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while, you may, while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. For to our God, for he will freely pardon. Again, David, the faithful love promised to David, he did this. He sought the Lord and the Lord forgave him. Well, that's the covenant that we want people to enter into with God. And this, this is just a beginning. There are so many covenants that God offers us. But this one is a covenant of life and a covenant of peace. See, we were under a curse. We, we were in Genesis, right? What happened with Adam and Eve there in the garden? Humanity died. And we've been under that curse. What happened with Noah? Humanity had corrupted itself, and it was under judgment. That happened, I mean, six chapters into the Bible, and we've already got a couple messes, don't we? God created everything perfect in two chapters, and the rest of it's him cleaning up our mess. But he's offering us a covenant. See, we, we can't bring anything other than our belief, our faith. You know, Abraham... 
was was given a promise by God and, and we're told that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. When he was told about the stars in the heaven, so will his descendants be. So we are offered a covenant of life and of peace and it's all through our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Not through the law. You know, the law, was, you know, Levi and Phineas, they were under the law, and, and we, we see that the nation couldn't uphold God's law. You know, they were human, and they failed. But, but you and I, we, we have this, and it says back there in verse 3, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, a faith, my faithful love promised to David. God has made an everlasting covenant with us through his son Jesus. Our sins will be forgiven. Covenants. Yeah, we have the covenant of the rainbow. And we remember that when we see that. God hasn't done away with that covenant yet. You know, that He's not going to flood the earth again. Next time he's going to use fire. I don't know, I, that, that's an event all by itself. But for us, you know, when we see the storms come, the rains pour down, we don't have to be afraid that it's the, the Lord going to wipe us out again. We have his covenant in the rainbow. But we also have his covenant in the word that says we have life and we have peace. So I would challenge you. Do you know what the covenants are? I mean, if you, if you belong to a homeowner's association, you know what the covenants are, right? If your grass is too tall, they're going to come and get you. If your bushes are too shaggy or if your, your music's too loud, you better know the covenants. Mm -hmm. Well, as, as Christians, don't you think we should know the covenants that we have from God? That we are under? He, he held the priests accountable for them. Apparently, they didn't know their covenants back in Malachi. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to know the promises that we have from God. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. And Lord, I thank you for your promises to us, Lord, the covenants that we have through you, Lord. Lord, you know us. You know our failings, Lord. You know our hearts. And, and Lord, you, you've established this covenant because of your strength. And, and Lord, you offer us life and peace, just like you offered David. Lord, your, your everlasting love, even though he failed, Lord, you forgave him because he sought you and he repented with bitter tears. So, Lord, we, we thank you for that promise that we too can receive the forgiveness of sins and that we too can enter into eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen your people. And Lord, give us that zeal to want to honor you like Phineas, Lord, to, to, to glorify your name, Lord, and to see your honor upheld as we see all the darkness going around us, Lord. Help us to stand firm for you. We love you, and we ask for these blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen.